Hi friends, Jesus is my rock and that's how I roll. Welcome to another episode of California Healing. So what are you full of? Because what you're full of is what you're going to spill. I just wanted to talk about this because I realized that I can be full of anxiety and full of fear. If you're holding a cup of coffee and somebody bumps into you, you are going to spill coffee on them. If you are full of love and peace and joy and somebody bumps into you, you are going to spill out love, peace, Enjoy! It's kind of a no-brainer. If you're sitting around asking yourself why things are going a certain way and why people might be treating you a certain way, it's good to ask yourself what you're full of. You are living forgiven. But when I was living in Bedford, New York, which is only about 15 minutes away from where I'm staying right now, I was a mother for the third time. So with the third pregnancy, when Brooks was about, gosh, I wanna say four or five months old, I noticed that I was having trouble sleeping. I noticed that I was extremely irritable. I felt unmotivated. I didn't want to make plans. I didn't feel good about myself. I actually felt like I was living in some days. It took me when uh, I was walking through the hallways in the middle of the night, uh, just trying to pass time, the wheels started to come off a little bit. It was like a tipping point. I realized this is not good. I'm not feeling in my body. And it didn't help that Brooks was having these fainting spells. I mean, she was six months old and I would go to take, she, she'd be smiling and then I'd go to take her sweater off. And by the time the shirt was off, she'd be turning blue and stiff as a board. And I'd be panicked and carrying her down the stairs. You know, Billy! And I thought every time it happened that she was dead, you know? So it, I also had all of this trauma around her having these, you know, infant fainting spells. I was spilling panic. I was spilling detachment. I was spilling loneliness. I was spilling grief. I knew that I needed to do something about it, but I really felt very stuck and I didn't know what to do. So I just felt at a loss. And one night Stephen Baldwin came over with his wife, Kenya. It was Super Bowl Sunday. And I just remember that our nieces were there and they were young at the time. They were still teenagers. Stephen and Kenya started praying over our nieces. I was very intrigued by this. I was just like, hmm. Cause it wasn't just like, thank you God for these girls. It was more like, Lord, thank you for these girls and you know, for creating them in their mother's womb. And for, you know, it was just like very zealous. And I just remember thinking to myself, have they lost their minds or is what they're doing and what is happening right now real? I just heard a voice that said, whatever they're doing in the kitchen with these girls, I want you to walk in and ask them to do that to you as well. And I was like, say what? Come again. Are you sure? I heard it again. So that's what I did. I walked in, I sat down and it was really perfect timing because literally the day before I thought that driving into a tree might actually be a good solution because I couldn't think of anything else to make my dread in my head and my panic disorder and my sleepless nights. Oh my gosh, the insomnia was just horrendous. They prayed over me and I had the same exact holy scan experience that I had when I was 12 years old and I went to the Baptist school uh, in Los Angeles where the girls were all standing around me with the salvation card and some of you know my testimony. They were praying around me uh, and I was reading the salvation prayer. From the moment I started saying the words, I just felt this holy scan come over my body and it just went down my face, my chest, my legs, my knees, my you know, my, to my feet. And by the time they were done, I was literally speechless. I, I couldn't speak and I didn't have any desire to speak and um, it, it, I didn't talk for like two days. I mean, I may have said just a few words. I don't know, it was interesting. It was almost like the Lord wanted to give me a very holy encounter. I took that and, and believed that Jesus was Lord, but of course at my house there were no Bibles. There was no prayer going on. It was like pot smoking going on and drinking and great music, but yeah, not so much um, 
the holy flow through the house. So I received Jesus as my Lord and Savior. I started going to church and things did get a whole lot better. Um, and I was also baptized by Kenya, you know, like a week or two later in her tub. There was a guy playing the guitar. And I came up out of the water and I truly felt like this was the beginning of my new life. I literally felt born again. And I felt like I was a new creation in Christ Jesus, hallelujah. God loves hands, I don't know why, but he just loves hands. And that's when I grasped that the Bible is the written word of God and that Jesus is the living word of God and that Jesus is the full message, the entire message that God is trying to communicate to mankind. That's when I got it. I was That was my aha moment when I was like, err, I see God. So you are trying to communicate that you sent your son from his holy habitat down to planet earth to be my Lord and savior and that the only person that can stand in front of the living God is a perfect person. That would not be me. But now that I have received your son as my Lord and Savior, I can stand in your holy presence because you see me as you see your son and you see your son as perfect. I'm sharing this because we, we started with like, what are you spilling, right? So back then, you know, I still had my issues, obviously, obviously, after. You all know, y'all know that after I received Jesus, things did not get perfect. And let's just all really take a moment to acknowledge that when you become a born again Christian, it does not mean at all that your life is gonna be perfect. You might have a little, you know, honeymoon phase where you're feeling like life is all, you know, rainbows, roses, and unicorns, and cotton candy, but it doesn't last long. I'm here to tell you, it does not last long because the Bible says that, you know, in the beginning, he's just encouraging you and kind of like giving you breast milk and then you got to move on to solid foods and become like, you know, drop the sippy cup saint and become an adult in Christ and mature in Christ. And you want that. It hurts because you're being purified and you're walking through trials. But anyways, I was spilling um, all of these really dark negative things and then Jesus found me. I started spilling love and light and hope and uh, encouragement and faithfulness and goodness and peace and love and joy um, and self-control. Things really did get better. But when you've been accustomed for years and years and years to be in a place of fear, insecurity, or detachment, it's very easy for your boat to capsize. But I found that when I was truly turning my burdens over to the Lord, that my ship wasn't capsizing as much. And I wasn't in as many conversations with the accuser because at any given moment, you are either engaging in a conversation with the advocate or the accuser. Obviously the advocate is God. God's always cheering for you. God's always, you know, uh, wanting the best for you. God is always there to love you and support you. And the accuser is always there to tell you you're a loser and that you are uh, unworthy and that you are uh, not adding up and that basically you're just a terrible person. Satan is always masquerading himself as a distraction. So if you're feeling super distracted in your life all the time, like, oh, my phone, or, oh, you know, I've got to go here, I've got to go there, I've got this business meeting, I've got that, there's no time for the Bible, there's no time for prayer, there's no time for community, there's no time for fellowship. If you're feeling restless like that all the time, just know that it's definitely 100% Satan. It's just him doing the distraction trick, which really is um, probably his most effective trick that he has in his bag, and I fall for it all the time. So just don't be discouraged, you're not alone. Um, you know, there's a lot of people commenting down here and you guys can find ways to support each other and not being so distracted in your life because if you didn't know that that is the enemy at work, if you're constantly distracted and don't have time for God, newsflash, it's definitely Satan working in your life. A lot of people have trouble with the word Satan, so if you wanna replace the word Satan with the enemy or the dark one or you know the accuser, Fine by me, I understand. The Satan word is a lot. So now I'm gonna talk about something that 
I have been super reluctant to discuss uh, on California preaching because I really wanted to wait on getting sort of the okay from the boss to talk about it. And I've been praying about it for a really long time. And finally, I, I woke up this morning and the Lord said to me, today's the day. And I'm actually stunned because this is something that happened to me 16 years ago. And there are literally maybe one or two people in the whole world that, that know about this extraordinary thing that happened to me. And I'm gonna share it with you because if God said it's all right to say it, if God gave me permission to share this with you, then I'm down. Like I said, I was living on the top of a mountain in a gorgeous house. I mean, I had all the trappings. I had all the trimmings. I had the great car. I had money in the bank. I had, you know, a successful career. I had three children. I had this gorgeous husband. I had, you know, all the things that anybody could want in life. But I didn't have a relationship with God that um, was alive and thriving and I didn't feel connected to a higher source at all. I just felt like I was um, wandering, you know, in, in the desert and I was very, very thirsty. So when I finally found God or God found me, it was an extraordinary time in my life. And I just remember thinking, because even though I had accepted Jesus when I was 12, I just remember thinking, oh my goodness, like this truly is the answer. This is it. This is what my soul has been yearning for. This is the whole reason why I was born into this world and nothing else comes before this. This is the most important thing in my life is Jesus Christ and my relationship with Jesus Christ. I told you that I was a little, not suicidal, but I had suicidal ideology. You know, I would think to myself, if I just drove into that tree, you know, this would all be over and I wouldn't have to feel this way anymore. And um, this was prior to accepting Jesus as my Lord and Savior for the second time. I know I'm jumping around a little bit. So I accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior. I got baptized, started going to church, and um, I, I very quickly joined a Bible study. I was reading the Bible several hours a day. I couldn't get enough. I was just soaking it up. My soul was so hungry. I like to say that, you know, I had a soul hunger and the Bible is soul food. So literally I was just nourishing myself on the word of God and I would read it for hours. I, I also noticed um, that I wasn't taking like these long naps anymore in the middle of the day. I mean, I used to, literally I used to, like the housekeeper would come or the nanny would come and I would say, oh, I'm going to the market. And I would get in my car and I would go drive to some little remote area in the neighborhood and I would park the car and I would get in the back seat and I would take like a two hour nap. I would have a little pillow and a blanket. And it was like, I just needed to get away from my, I know it sounds horrible, but like from my kids and from my husband and I just needed, I needed chai time, alone time, and I was exhausted. Like it was, it was abnormal exhaustion, and um, I was really just frayed. I was fried and frayed. I just needed a whole lot of help. One morning, I was in bed, and um, I was laying in bed, and I was asleep. But then I uh, was awakened. I was awakened by, I want to say a light, I want to say a presence, but it was so much more than that. It was perfect. I was awakened by perfection and I could feel this perfection all around me. And even though my eyes were closed, I could see the light all around me as well. I could feel the love, I could feel the peace, I could feel the the joy, I could feel the life behind this perfection. I didn't have to ask myself if it was God. I knew that it was God. And there was also a vibrational field around me that was caressing me, comforting me, holding me, embracing me. And what this perfection was ministering to me was you are not home, but you will be one day. And this is a taste, a foretaste of eternity. Yeah, it gets me really emotional. 
never felt anything as beautiful as that in my life. And I haven't felt anything as beautiful as that since that experience. But the really shocking thing was that it happened the very next morning again. It happened twice, two days in a row. And I just, I just sort of tucked it away. I sort of compartmentalized it because without the Lord saying to me, China, I don't want you to speak of this. It was just an agreement. It was a knowing that I wasn't going to share about this. And I didn't have any compulsion at all to share about it. It was so holy and so perfect that I was just in awe and um, utterly submitted to it <laughs> and um, him, I should say. I just knew that um, it was God and I didn't know why and I still don't really know why that happened to me, but I do know that it convicted my heart that there most certainly is a God and he most certainly loves and cares for his creation and he is most certainly holy. His son is most certainly Jesus. Another thing that happened the day I got baptized was there was a double rainbow over New York. Uh, I went out onto the porch in Nyack and I looked out with this other woman and we were both just, you know, gobsmacked. Like, <laughs> and there was this gigantic double rainbow. And of course the Bible says that rainbows are, um, are a reminder of God's promise to mankind. What I love about our faith is that it celebrates sinners saved by grace. It doesn't celebrate people who think they know all the answers and who have nothing to repent of. It celebrates sinners. It celebrates people who are able to say, I'm defected, I need God. I know inwardly, I have knowledge that I am imperfect and therefore I don't want to even attempt to stand in front of a holy God broken, why would I ever want to do that? Why would I think I could do that? Yeah, I, I, I was very attracted to that as a new believer because that just resonated with me. It resonated as truth for me. I mean, I guess because I'd seen so much destruction and so much toxicity and so much, so many lives hurt and broken in my family. There was no question whether sin was real or whether darkness was real or whether the human condition is real. All of us need a Messiah. All of us need a savior. All of us need the hope that's in Christ Jesus. And I just realized that my air conditioner has been on this, or my heater has been on this entire time. Pray with me, Father, Heavenly Father, we love you. And I thank you, Father, that you put it on my heart this morning that it would be all right to share this holy experience that I had all those years ago. And I thank you, Father, for being so faithful to me. And I thank you, Father, for ministering to everybody who's watching this video right now, that they might know you as Lord and Savior and that they might ask you to reveal yourself to them if they don't know you, God, that they would simply just say, Jesus, please reveal yourself to me if you are real. And I thank you, Father, for blessing and anointing and pouring out your abundance and your goodness and your holiness out onto everyone today watching this and giving them a living hope, a hope that is alive, a hope that is supported by your heavenly angels. Um, I thank you that you've given me a platform to be able to talk to all of my brothers and sisters and to be able to let them know um, the truth that you have made so clear to me, Lord. And I ask that you would make your truth as clear to them as the moon and the sun, Lord, that when they're looking at the moon, they know they're looking at the moon. And when they look at the sun, they know they're looking at the sun. 
And thank you, Father, that even on our darkest days, we know that you are shining in all your glory behind the dark and ominous sky, just like the sun is always shining behind the dark and ominous sky. So are you, Lord. And I thank you for giving people that hope. Lord, you are eternal, you are majestic, you are perfect, and you are loved. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' perfect name, amen. Thanks for watching this video, guys, and remember that Jesus will never be dethroned. I love you, and peace of Christ. Hi, everybody. So we've been doing the serenity prayer together every single morning. I say, God, grant me the serenity to accept the things, things I cannot change. change. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. You just have to breathe in. Honey, you just have to... You sprayed it on my tongue. Every single Sunday, I've been doing California healing. Mm -hmm. You felt really bad because you're like, I hijacked your Sundays. I'm like, you finally gave me my Sunday back. I know. Unless you guys think I should be on Cal Hill. I don't it's know. women only. Oh, Do you know how much opinion. healing is going on? Yes. There? Everyone, we've got your prayers. We've got your back. The best commentary on the Bible is the Bible. I just thank you for every woman that is watching right now and that there'll be a strength that comes to her. The fact that he said, I will help you. I just held on to that. He was my help. Let's sing out this chorus. It's your breath. I was going to ask you if you would be our, our patriot. Your mascot? No, because it's Patreon. I want to know if you'll be our Patriot. What? You, what does you, that don't mean? Know, you don't even know what it requires. What all, all you would have to do is come on and sing the Serenity Prayer every single time in the beginning. That's it. No, I would never do that. The courage to change the things I can. And the wisdom to know. The difference. That was really good. Listen, for so many of us, being of service is really important, and that's what Cal Healing is doing, especially if you're a Christian, if you're a woman. This is creating this wonderful, beautiful community where they are. I mean, I've popped in on this. I've overheard from a distance. They are doing God's work. Aww, doing God's okay. work. You are creating this environment, this culture, this safe space for women to come together and to band together and to be there for one another and to be of service and to spread uh, spread the word. Every single week there's a brand new testimony. That's mm -hmm. my favorite, you know, to hear how people came to God. It's amazing. I'm not allowed. But you could sing, God grant me the serenity every single time. I can't time. believe you just got me to do that. <laughs> That's gonna turn up somewhere and somebody's gonna be just grilling me for that. California healing. Check it out, hit that link. Get your heel on. Get your heel on.